um, the first public, nice, detailed public description was in the book of Cara St. Louis Farelli, The Sun Thief, where she says that there are hollow fibers sprayed, self-replicating hollow fibers uh, that are there to kind of uh, read out the light fingerprint of your DNA, transform it into an electromagnetic s radio signal that is detectable via satellite and ground stations. This is what she found out by analyzing information dealt with the uh, chemtrail communities in the United States. She never mentioned the name Morgellons in her book, but um, if you look at these Morgellons, who had heard about the Morgellons disease? Half of you, okay. Uh, let's just have a look at them. Nice creatures. This is a German tomato that got some German rain on top of itself. Is that real time? This is real time, yes. Now watch the Morgellon, what he does. He loves us. He's getting excited and he's trying to get close. I don't know exactly what they react on, maybe on infrared radiation. So these are basically, it's mycelium of a certain type of um, um, fungus. And this fungus is, first, if you want to look at it, it's airborne. It's not a single fiber here and there. Um, it is glowing under UV light. So if you take a UV lamp at night, um, you can see those fibers airborne. And there are billions of them. Not every night, but every now and then. You can see them fly around. And these fibers, these fungus, is infecting the human body. And with 95% or 99% of the people, nothing special happens. They're just embedded somewhere. And uh, your, your biology is keeping the, the fungus population low in your body. They just function as a plasmonic antenna to send out a signal, but you don't get sick from it. You don't get ill. No visible symptoms. So we, we would guess 100% of the population in Europe is infected. It's not a big deal, it's not dangerous, as long as the body can handle these things. Some of the people cannot handle it. And then the, the mycelium is starting to grow within the body and starting to multiply. And at a certain point, they are extracted via the skin. And you can see that they have these ability um, to collect uh, colors. You have blue morgellons and you have red morgellons. And nobody knows where these colors come from because they are of technical origin. It's not a natural substance. So you can see them when the skin is opening. You can see them under the microscope if you make a blood analysis. You can see that the blood is infected. And you can let them grow artificially in a petros, petri dish. Uh, dish. And if you look at them, you see they're a little bit more complex than a simple um, um, fungus. They have kind, kind of organs inside. They have little red stem cells of an unknown species that are self-replicating as well. Um, and apparently they produce other structure. This looks like... Um, a sporing body, it's like, like the unit where the, the, um, uh, the mycelium at a certain point is forming a mushroom, a fruiting body. And then from the fruiting body you would expect the spores for the next generation, if this is a mushroom, if this is a fungus. So this seems to be uh, the, the containment for the spores, because if you put this into the Petri dish, you can see the next generation growing. 
And other things you find, now it's getting fringe, it's really getting fringe, is fragments of insect skin being extracted from a Morgellon victim. So something makes these, uh, something fr from this disease is making insect parts or insects grow within the human body. He, he said it had been tested in the last Iraq war. This was the, the war was only done for the purpose of testing the system. Now you're talking about the, uh, the most recent one with the yes, Bush. Yes, with, Bush, with the, the junior. With, with yeah. Bush. Yeah. And they sprayed that in Iraq. And they sprayed it in Iraq. And uh, we had single news, for example, that they fought back the Iraqi army by utilizing microwave weapons that gave them the feeling that the skin burns. Yeah. This was in public media and, and, and yes. mainstream media. And this is not because the microwave weapon had the intensity to make it burn. This is what, because the RNA was triggered to create the sensation of burning. So this had a kind of agent within the bodies of the Iraqi army. They tested all other aspects of it. Which are, and, which are these aspects? Um, from, from the text he says you have these psychotronic weapons, making them give up, making them fall in love with the American soldiers, whatever. A, a long list of psychotronic uh, functions. And you can make people sick, you can make them die of cancer after one year, you can make them die in six minutes, and you can make them die in six seconds if you want to. This is what he listed. And um, But the most... Uh, most interesting thing from, from this paper is that he said that they spent 10 billion US and one, no, half a year, I think it was half a year, to optimize the cluster topology. And this is something, it, it sounds just like science fiction if you say it like this, but if you really think about it, if it is only about infecting humans with a virus-like synthetic RNA, you could give a damn about cluster topology. Cluster topology starts to, to become an interesting topic if this RNA cluster is supposed to carry a soul. Only carry. then a soul or an artificial intelligence or whatever, an so RNA. Um, so so th this is kind of the, the first time that I had an, an input, an idea of how do they turn people into biorobots. You have the RNA cluster within the air, sprayed in the air with a defined distance from RNA to RNA. And within the human body, the same RNA cluster is prolonged within the cells. And now, whatever is carried by these clusters, the artificial intelligence or a program or a soul, whatever this is, can travel from the dust into the human being. This is smart dust. And this is what they call smart dust. And now, uh, this is all kind of grabbed theory. Uh, if you take the Morgellon topic, uh, Morgellon topic is, you find it described as a transhumanistic technology to extract light from the human body, turn it into a radio signal to read out what happens within the human, and opposite way to insert light, not a radio frequency to the human, to make him feel whatever you want to make him feel. If you take this Morgellon concept, if you take the, the nanocrystals, the nanocrystal concept, and if you take um, all the other things, and then you look into some internal papers of the NASA, this is something that went online, I don't know when, uh, 2000 maybe, or a little bit earlier. It, w it wasn't meant to be published. It was an internal lecture um, in, the, in the NASA facilities in the United uh, States. I like Some the way you say NASA. <laughs> Is that just your thick German accent or uh, are you putting a Z in there intentionally? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not intentionally, but it is like this. Uh, and and they, they kind of inform each other about future strategic issues for warfare projecting to the year 2025 with a subtitle, big subtitle, The Future Is Now. 
And if you look through it, you find the concept of some sensor swarm, smart dust. You find nanotechs, which is identical with the Morgellon function. And you find co-opted insects. So somewhere in the American, in the American intelligence community, Big which spiders. seems to be uh, black magic inspired. Oh, well, there are certain individuals who say the U.S. Army has totally been satanic since like the 1930s. Uh, sometimes I would say it looks like. Definitely the, uh, intellig the, the army base intelligence community, especially whatever was founded by the... Uh, Tavistock Institute, which is CIA and Office of Naval Intelligence. Those are definitely black magic institutions. From their origin, going back to the Tavistock, I mean, this is Kara's part more than mine. There's an interview, I guess, of her online. Um, but uh, NASA knows all the components and it is interlocked in the United States. If you go to Silicon Valley, you have three big buildings. One is Singularity University with the founder Ray Kurzweil, who is dreaming about, in a, there are interviews out there where Kurzweil is dreaming about sending nanobots to other planets to harvest energy and matter to multiply the over in overall intelligence of the human machine civilization. Originally his words. And then he asked himself if, if there's a God that exists and he says not yet. Yeah. This is Ray Kurzweil. Now next building from Singularity University Transhumanistic Headquarters is Google Headquarters uh, where he now is uh, head developer. Same Ray Kurzweil. And on the other side of the, tra of, the, of the university is NASA headquarters, the one who is certifying the planes to spray, ac according to Kara's novel. So all these members of this black brotherhood even sit in the same street as neighbors. And uh, I, I think it's, it's well, kind of about... They feel fairly safe. Uh, looks like. But that's because people don't understand the consequences, or are they hive programmed already? Some people do understand the consequences. The Russians did understand the consequences of spraying the military compounds, which would have meant losing the harvest and falling under Monsanto, and they decided to stop spraying. And the NSA realized, I guess, that the CAA is a black magic unit. And the NSA, at least parts of it, is still into uh, American interests and the American... Um, I mean, actually human interests. Yes, w whatever. So uh, the answer on... or, or No, not the answer. Um, maybe in a reaction to realizing that whatever is happening there with uh, following demonic or archon interests... Um, the NSA downed Evergreen International. They downed the CAA spraying airline. And the, and the kind of well, little... When you say downed it, do they shut it down? Yes. NSA has one option. This is cutting money flow. If, if the CAA wants the Congress to send troops to Iran to start World War III, and they are blackmailing members of the Congress, sending millions to them to vote for their interests. The NSA is blocking the money flow. This is the only option they actually have if they don't want to enter this war. And, um, but the logic of that situation is that um, the United States is losing control of itself. Yes. Because the information I got recently was this massive war. I don't think we haven't talked Maybe. about this alien war that's out of, slightly out of frequency, shall we say. That within six years, the United States is going to be completely destroyed. Uh, maybe parts of them are regaining control at the moment, which would be nice. No. I mean, look, look, look at uh, the position of veterans today in the United States of today. Well, there's been a big row with that recently. Yeah, and look how the NSA acts. Some of them are still in their minds, I would say. And the uh, worst case scenario would be a civil war between Pentagon and CAA Homeland Security Alliance. And this is maybe why the uh, 
prognosis on number of surviving Americans within the next years is pretty harsh and low. Now, what do you mean by that, the prognosis? Of uh, there's one, one website that is kind of giving out numbers of how many people will live in which country during the next day. Uh, next next decades and for United States they gave out numbers of 20% surviving. <laughs>